filling the cup from the bottom up and how we must descend before we can ascend. I'm going to Philippians 2, 5 through 8, and it reads, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. So we're going to look at the secret on how to be filled which has to do with the descending, descending principle. You must descend to ascend in order to be filled with the spirit or new life. The spirit can be on you or you can be baptized with the spirit and you can also be filled with the spirit. There is a difference. In Ephesians 5, verse 18, and be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. Be not drunk with wine, but be filled with the Spirit. Acts 2, verse 2, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the house where they were sitting. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. It said the Spirit filled all the house where they were sitting. They were all filled with the Holy Ghost. In Ephesians 5, 8, 8, 18, Ephesians 5, 18, Be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled, that's present tense, then Ephesians 4, 8 through 10, wherefore he saith, when he ascended up on high, speaking of the Lord, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto man or unto men. Now that he ascended, what is it but that he also descended first in the lower parts of the earth? He that descended is the same also that ascended up far above all heavens that he might fill all things. That is so powerful. So example, how do you fill something? How do you fill it up? Well, you must start from the bottom up. You start at the bottom. We live in a world where people want to start at the top, even in business matters. Bottom first, you descend as low as you can, then you work your way up. So the Lord Jesus is our eternal example. Jesus did not stop descending. He did not stop descending when he left heaven's glory. He descended to the womb of the Virgin Mary on earth, then to the cross, then to death and hell, all the way to the bottomless pit. When he was resurrected, he was resurrected from the bottomless pit. You can't get any lower than that. In uh, Romans 5.20, Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound, But where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. Praise God. It says where sin did abound, grace did much more abound. So Jesus went below sin and put grace under there. Then he ascended up to the mercy seat in heaven. So beneath sin and above sin is his omnipresent blood. Ephesians 4, verse 10, he that descended is the same also that ascended up far above all the heavens that he might fill all things. 
So we want to just come in sometimes and be just totally filled instantly. But God wants us to take a little of his word and a little of his spirit <clears throat> and let it go down to the low place in our hearts. If we don't learn how to be filled, then we will, we will get in trouble when we get in these low places in life. Philippians 2, 5 through 8, uh, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Think like him. Who, being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant <clears throat> and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. So Jesus came and made him, himself of no reputation. Jesus, Jesus never filled anything until he started down. We will find the low place of no reputation in this life. Somebody will talk about us. Someone cuts us down. This is a place of no reputation. Jesus did this himself. He descended. Then he leads us in the same footsteps. Because you can't ascend unless you descend first. You can't even bounce a ball unless you throw it down first. A rocket being launched, it's got to start at the bottom. Then it goes up or ascends. Must go from the bottom up. God takes us down to teach us how to be filled. So don't be alarmed when the wheel of God turns. One day you're on top. And another day you're on the bottom and you're in the low place. That will happen. Can't avoid that. It's how you react to it and what you do with it that counts. And you have a short time in this life because it's like a vapor of smoke. It'll just go away. Before you know it, you'll be on the other side. So these things and these principles will help you um, have a better resurrection It'll help you have more glory in eternity and be in a much higher place. When we go down and surrender to have no reputation, when the Lord was here, he took upon him the form of a servant. He didn't come as the king of kings and the Lord of lords and sitting on a throne of glory. No one wants to be a servant. For the most part, people want to be served. They don't want to serve. The Lord said, he that is your servant is, great, is the greatest among you. He that will be your servant. We must surrender to descending. Then we can be filled. Okay, now in Philippians 2, 5 through 8, there are seven steps of humility. The second step of humility is God wants us to serve when it's not convenient. This is the low place. But if our big eye of self syndrome is converted, we will be grateful to serve him. We'll have great gratitude. Third, he was made in the likeness of men or, 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 or uh, of a man. Fourthly, he was fashioned as a man. He went down in a low place to see what's in our heart. God takes us down to fill us up if we will surrender. He was fashioned as a man. He was being tried and tested. Jesus was tried and tested. Fifthly, he humbled himself. The low place of repentance. The devil tells you you've missed it and you feel like a complete, total failure. These are just steps to be filled. This is how it works. 
Jesus humbled himself and he didn't do anything wrong. We should just repent anyway out of principle. Repent every day. And six, uh, number six, he was obedient unto death. Jesus was persecuted. So how do we feel when we are being persecuted? Well, when we are being persecuted, we are in the low place. Um, all God is trying to do by, by bringing us down is to empty out of us the flesh, the old worldly pride that we're full of, our dependence on creatures. So there is a low place of persecution. Jesus said, if they hated me, mark it down, they will, they will hate you also. Persecution pushes us down to the very last step. Number seven, and that would be verse eight, and being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Number eight, the death of the cross a place of bondage and death. You're, you're down at the bottom and you can't lift a finger to go on for God. You feel completely depleted. You just have no, nothing in you that wants to go on for God. You can't do anything to go on for God. You're totally dead. You feel totally dead. On this last step, you reach out to God and sometimes he feels like he's a million miles away. You pray and the heavens seem to be made out of brass. We are at that time in the bonds of death. In John six sixty eight, then Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. You want to run, but like Peter said, Lord, to whom shall I go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. And I know what that feels like. You're just completely dead. You feel like God's a million miles away, that he's just marked you off the, the list. That your name's been removed out of the book of life and you feel like I'm just not going to go on for God. I'm, you know, uh, there's no God but you know that there is a God. And you know what? You finally come to the place where Peter came. Lord, who else has the words of eternal life? Jesus is waiting to hear you say, Lord, I want you, and there's no one else in this world but you that I can totally depend on. When he hears you say, I'd rather just die here then go back to Egypt. And you come to the place where you say, I am I am unworthy to even live, much less serve you. To whom shall I go? To whom shall I turn? Then around the corner, you find God filling you with new life, new word, new joy, and excitement, and at that time, it becomes a romance to go on for God. Then he fills you until you start to overflow and you start to let that new life get on others around you. These are spiritual cycles that we go through. Get used to it. We descend, then we eventually ascend, like a, the turning of a wheel. W-H-E-E-L. One day you're on top, and then you start descending, and then you start ascending. So as we understand, we can cooperate with this process, and we need to get this big I syndrome converted, the I, me, my, and mine. As we get self out of the way, we can go down faster and get filled faster with his spirit of life. Jesus said, I come to give you life in that more abundantly. But you're not going to get this abundant life unless you descend first. So the moral of the story is we must descend before we can ascend and be filled with new life. 
If we fight this process, then we become miserable, lukewarm, lukewarm and ineffective and unproductive as Christians. So we must descend before we can ascend.